what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of, like P90X founder Tony Horton, you may have heard of, but what you may not know is, you know, Wayne, he made money as a street mime before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. That's how he made money. Uh, he put a hat on the street wow. and do street miming, and that's how he made his food and uh, rent money. Um, Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talks about growing her company to $20 million with five employees and selling to Disney, but she also talks about beating cancer twice. And Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. So check out many more episodes on inspiredinsider.com. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And what we do is we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners um, by helping them run and launch their podcast that generates ROI. And for me, you know, podcasting is a lot more personal. It's not just business because my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor, him and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany. And they were the only members of their family to survive. But his words and legacy live on because of an interview, because the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him. And I put it on my about page and I watch it multiple times a year um, just for inspiration and appreciation and gratitude. So yes, podcasting will help your business, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy of knowledge. Um, and I personally credit podcasting to one of the best things I've done for my business and my life. Um, besides meeting my wife because of an amazing relationship. So we worked with Berkshire Hathaway companies, um, agencies, SaaS companies, any B2B businesses. So if you have questions, um, you can email support at rise25media.com or go to rise25.com. Um, Wayne, I am excited to introduce today's guest. We have Wayne Deering. He's co-founder of USP Fulfillment. And for 30 years, they've done full service print production, fulfillment, in our direct mail house. And they create and ship everything from books, promotional items. They serve up products for infomercials, speakers, events, and subscription fulfillment. And you've probably heard of some of the companies they've done work for. Uh, they work with companies like Costco, Sony, Coca-Cola, Disney, Walmart. Um, and they've even created and sent items for the Grammys and the Emmy Award shows. Wayne, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. You know, who do you go for, for advice and, and mentorship? over the years and it could be a colleague or just a mentor in general. Well, you know, uh, over the years, over the last 10 years or so, it's been uh, yeah, the guys from Digital Marketer, to be honest, you know, and uh, also uh, fortune builders, you know, guys like Dan Merrill, um, to with uh, Roland Frazier, Ryan Dice, you know, Perry Belcher, talking to those guys, uh, we are uh, heavily invested in their success because they order a lot from us. So, you know, and, and their success has been tremendous. So uh, it, using them as a mentor or relying on them as a mentor and, and asking for advice from them, those are probably the people I go to yeah. the most. Yeah. Um, I have one last question, Wayne, I ask, and first of all, thanks sure. for sharing your stories. To you, they're commonplace. To most people, it's pretty amazing how – how your work reaches so far and wide with the companies you serve and the events, you know, it really touches, you're touching, I mean, you're helping whatever, tens of thousands of, of companies, but you're touching millions of people. So um, to me, it's remarkable. To you, it's just you're, what you do. Yeah, but, I've, never, I've never really thought about it that way. That's a good, great way to look at it. I yeah. just, you know, it's when you're so close to a project, the focus does not become, well, you know, I you have to it. zoom in, if you will, right? I get it. Because someone is like, do this in a week. You're like, you can't focus on anything else but getting it done in a week. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So, well, if, if you imagine if you imagine like an image where you zoom in, you know, and you're, you're so close to it. A lot of these projects were so close to it. It's right in front of our face. So our, our focus is, is a very little part of that project. And I've never, I don't really ever, I zoom out enough to make sure the process goes, um, 
you know, all the way through to completion, but never zooming way back. Yeah. Where you go, wow. You know, I've never thought about it that way, but that's an interesting, an interesting way to think about it. And if I ever had, you know, five minutes to think about (laughs) it, um, (laughs) <laughs> we'll, cons- we'll consider this your five minutes you know um thanks i appreciate I, it yeah um i so i always ask since it's inspired insider two things one what's been a, a low moment a challenging moment that you really had to push through and on the flip side what's been an especially proud moment for you in you know decades of business um because we all you know as a business we there's always challenging moments and in, in tough times what's been uh, a challenging time and how you push through it. Well, the challenging times have been uh, less, have not really been on the business side. They, as we're in the service side, but it has been on the personal side. I have five sons. Oh my gosh. And, um, I, uh, two of my, uh, my sons are twins. I have twins and they were born at 27 weeks. Wow. So they were, <sighs> two pounds. Um, they were in uh, the ICU for 14 weeks. One of those boys has cerebral palsy. Mm. And as a result of being born that early and it, yeah, cerebral palsy is basically brain damage. And, mm. um, so while, uh, you know, working, designing, uh, managing uh, some product launches while I'm sitting at children's hospital while my son's having brain surgery. Those Mm -hmm. were some, um, those were some challenging moments. Um, But the work is actually what helped me get through it. Yeah. Well, the work is what helped me get through it because it's, you know, people used to tell me, when we were going through, they said, you guys are, you know, my wife and I, you guys are so strong. And, and I said, no, nobody that goes through this, you don't have a choice. There isn't, right. you don't have a choice to be strong. You're in a three sided hallway with the back pushing you forward and you just, you know, continue walking. Yeah. Um, so going through that whole process, that was real challenge, you know, challenging, but work is what actually kept me, my mind on a singular path mm. where okay. you don't dive down into the negative of everything that's going on around you. So I was able right. to sit there at the hospital while all of this was going on. And he's had five brain surgery. He's had 12 or 14 surgeries by wow. this point, but, um, you know, and after the third or fourth brain surgery, which he's fine now, he's a very intelligent boy. He has several apologies in school. He's a great kid, nice. but he, um, you know, going through all that is, is I, I was grateful to have the, the work because that, that's, that's what kept me sane. Wow. So what is the day in the life when you get home or before you get to the office and, and in the evening with five sons? <laughs> <laughs> that many kids. <laughs> well, uh, so my, my, my oldest child, he's out of the house now, but the other four are uh, 10, 10, 9, and 3. Oh my gosh. So a uh, typical day is get up very early, which I do <laughs> okay. naturally. I, I go to bed about eight o'clock at night and there's a reason for that, but uh, I go to bed about eight o'clock in the evening. Um, so I get up very early, get up. Uh, I let my wife sleep in a bit. I uh, get the kids, the three ready for school that are in school. Sure. Uh, get downstairs, feed them breakfast. Uh, meanwhile, my uh, wife comes downstairs. She uh, gets her lunches ready. I uh, get them loaded up, take them to school, come to the office, do what I do all day. And there's a running joke here at the office that I, I come to work to escape the chaos at home. <laughs> but it's uh, no joke. Well, <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Right. So uh, then uh, my wife picks them up. I get home. I hang out with the boys. We talk about their days. We do that sort of stuff. They've already had their homework done by the time I get home. Yeah. Um, typically, the the older boys or two of the older boys um, bathe themselves. My uh, 10-year-old with cerebral palsy needs help. So I usually bathe him and the uh, my three-year-old. And that's kind of our time where we talk and chat. And then the um, 
the reason why I go to bed is it's a, just a nightly routine. My three-year-old, after he's got his pajamas on, he comes and lays down with me. And mm-hmm. that is like probably the single greatest sedative in the world because when he lays down with me, I, I fall asleep with him. So Right. <laughs> and then I wake up, put him in his bed and rinse and repeat, uh, you know, yeah, every great. day. Thanks for sharing that. That's pretty amazing. So, um, yeah, no worries. So when's number six coming? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No more. No more? Okay. <laughs> I was never the guy that was going to have five sons. I was just never that guy. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I do have five sons. Um, but outside of that, we decided, um, that, you know, that was it. Explain to me. Yeah. I mean, come on. After like two. <laughs> um, what about on the flips? Thanks for sharing that. Um, Wayne, on the flip side, yeah. what's been a especially proud moment? It could be business or personal. Um, you know, the, the proud moment is just with is with the kids mostly that they're they're you know they turned out good. It's it's challenging, and what I mean by good is just all all the issues we went through um, from them being born so early. And mm-hmm. like I said, uh, you know, they have they're both on the autistic spectrum. So just and they've had. 6,500 hours of therapy. Wow. But they, uh, they've had literally therapy since they came home and just, you know, that, the the fact that they're well adjusted and uh, given everything that they've gone through, um, you know, that's really, uh, that's really it. You know, the, them, my kids are my greatest, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my children are my greatest achievement. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you. I appreciate you sharing your story and I appreciate you sharing because that's the reality of, of life, right? It's people see the business stuff, but like there's this whole universe that people don't see. It's like when you go home and you come, you know, you come back to work, it's this whole world, um, which is the, the most important world, you know? So I appreciate you sharing that. Right. And it's the bulk of your day, right? Yeah. Between sleeping and, and you know, yeah. your family, that, that's the bulk of your day. And this little bit of work is, you know, and I have an amazing wife that allows me to be me and, and yeah. do what I do. And, and, you know, it, so that helps as well. If I didn't have that, I, you know, probably yeah. things might be different or things would be different. So what are some lessons you learned from your wife? Uh, she's calmed me down, you know, really, um, I am by nature an anxious person. <laughs> I would not <laughs> so know always would moving, like always doing something. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So I, um, you know, she's really grounded me, you know, that's, that's really what it is. And she's, she's the polar opposite of me. I'm a type triple a personality and she's very laid back and very easygoing. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good offset for me because if I had somebody that was just like me, it'd probably be war all the time. What about with your business partner? Is he more calm or is he more type A like you? Oh, no. He's very calm, very diplomatic. I am the polar opposite. Okay. So he balances you out in the work <laughs> I, right. Yeah, he really does. You know, in here, which is funny, he's very diplomatic about things. I, I'm not. I don't. We do so much that uh, I don't have time for diplomacy with my employees. And they all know me. And yeah. they've all been here for a long time. But they, they you know, you I don't have time for diplomacy. Is, things have to get done. Yeah. I don't pull punches. And I don't yeah. sugarcoat things because right. there's just, there's no time for it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I think that the two of us together really balance it out well. Cool. Wayne, I want to be the first one to thank you. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out USPfulfillment.com. Check out what they have going on. Wayne, thank you so much. Thank you so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand.